Hi, welcome back to Corsica Drone. So today we're going to have a look at the Holystone HS700 GPS drone. It's got 1080p camera that shoots in 1080p 25 frames a second and it's supposedly got a flight time of around 20 minutes. So let's see what you get in the box. You never read it. So you get a manual pack, look at the size of that manual pack, we'll have a look at that in a minute. You get the transmitter and in here you get the drone. So let's just take everything out of the box quickly and I'll show you what you get. So in the box you get a holy stored notepad. Let's just show you this. So you get this little notebook, which I don't have never seen in drones before. It's a really nice little touch. You get this, got a pen, some post-it notes, and in here for purchasing off holy stone. And in here you can just fill it up with whatever you want. And you can just use it for notes, flight notes, flight times, anything like that. I think that's what it's meant to do, use as a flight log. You get the charger, which I'll discuss with you in a minute. You get a battery which is a 7.4 volt 2800 milliamp hour battery. This is the connector for the charger. You get a screwdriver and this is the tool you use to lock your motor so you can get your props off. Two landing gears, two sets of propellers. You get a LiPo charging bag which is a really nice touch. You get the phone holder that goes on the top of the transmitter. You get the camera holder which slides onto the front of the drone. You get the cable to connect the camera to the drone, which I'll show you again. And then you get the 1080p camera, which is powered from the drone itself. And you do need an SD card for it because it doesn't come with one. So that's what you get in the box. So this is the drone itself. So you can see the drone, it's very nicely made, it's, in fact it's really nicely made. The motors feel nice and smooth. Let's see if I can remember what, I think I've got right now what these motors are. Yeah, these are the 2204 1500 kV motors. And they feel very, very smooth. The, it's like a matte white finish. It's really nicely finished off. The seams are good, it's not like, it looks like it's been bored together. It is really, really nicely finished off. So what I'm going to do is, let me just pause the video, I'm going to build it together uh, and then I'll show it, and then I'll put the landing gear on when I come back so I can show how the landing gear go on. Okay, so by the magic of video, it's all in one piece. So, let me just show you how it does go together so you know yourself. So the props are self-tightening, so the left and right-handed props, so I'll hold them up and spin them off. You get a tool to do this. So the Mac A and B, so if you can see on the arms, I have that shows up okay, but you can see that one's got a B on, and that one should have an A on. And in the centre of the props, they also have the right, and I'm not if that'll pick up well on the camera. So you can't really go wrong, but you can't put them on wrong anyway, because they'll only screw on one way. The camera, uh, this camera just fits into the front of here. Now you do get two bits of foam with it, so I've put the thicker foam in, if you use the thinner foam you can put a GoPro in here, three or four, which I'll talk to you about in a second. And it simply just pushes this, just pushes in here and you put this little lock down to hold it in place. This cable plugs, one end goes into the bottom of the drone, and then the other end into the camera. And the only thing you need to do then is put an SD card in here. Right, so you can use a GoPro 3, GoPro 4 on here. It will fit in this frame with a thinner sponge. Here's the thing. Won't work with this cable. This cable is allowing video out to come from this camera into the drone through the Wi-Fi system back to the app. So you can see what's happening, obviously. That won't do that, obviously, with a GoPro, because the GoPro, for start off, doesn't have AV out. that works the same way, and this cable wouldn't fit anyway. So... If you've got a GoPro, yes you can use it, but you have to set your camera up how you want and just fly without the app. 
okay? The landing gear is ace. So if you can see this little clip on here, you push that in, and then pull that out and twist and out. So if you look on the bottom of there, it's got a little locking mechanism. Can you see it? Like a little key. That goes in here, like that. Twist it and lock it in place. Same on the other side. Absolutely love that design. And then your battery goes in the back here. Pull down on that. Push it, pull it out. Okay, so you can see inside there's your battery connector inside. And that simply locks into place there. Now, unlike other holy other unlike other videos I've seen on this drone, it ne I, the, all the ones I've seen and the pictures I've seen on the internet, it doesn't have a power on button. This one does, which I don't understand really, but yeah, this has come with a power button which makes a massive difference. It's much better having the power button on it. So that's how you assemble the drone. On the transmitter, you have a little rubber bung that goes in the top of here. You just pull that out, and then this holder which comes in the bag just pushes in. And then you open that up and put your phone in. It's as simple as that. Right, let me just talk to you about the battery charger before I forget. So this is the battery charger you get with it. And this plugs into your battery. Exactly the same way as the Bug 3 works. Bug 3 Pro. So this plugs into here. And then this plugs into here like this, and this plugs into a USB. This is going to take between five and seven hours to charge it. Okay? I do not recommend using this. What I recommend doing is using this bit, and you can buy a thing called, there's loads of them apart, a B3 charger, which charges 2 and 3S batteries up through their balance ports, which is what this is going to plug into. And it'll take half the time to charge it. They're about five or six quid. You can get them everywhere. Obviously, if I if I if I can find one, I'll put the link in Amazon when I put the link for the drone in, so you can see what. But it is a better, much better way of doing it because you're not going to take seven hours to charge. So I wanted to clear that up before I forget. Okay, so this is the controller. So as you can see, the controller has. Left and right joysticks, you can select mode 1 or mode 2. Uh, you can change that, tells you in the manual how to do it. It's simply a matter of pressing some buttons. I fly mode 1, which is where I turn it on, you're going to see it's got mode 1 in here. So if you look, I'm in mode 1. If you set it up differently, when it comes out of the box, it'll be mode 2. So in other words, throttle on your left, I fly throttle on the right. So on the front of the transmitter, you have your height and distance. You can see that, sorry. Um, your mode, your TX battery, so the batteries that are in here, and the RX battery, which is the drone itself. The little icon on the left of the screen is showing it's in GPS mode. If I flick that switch across, it's going to put it into altitude hold mode. Okay, so if you've got no GPS signal, or you just want to fly it a bit, for a bit of fun, have it a bit faster, stick it into altitude hold mode. On the other side, you have headless mode, which allows the drone to fly. So, in other words, it doesn't matter which way the craft facing, forwards will always be forwards, backwards will always be backwards. So if I push away on the stick and it's this way around, it's going to do that. Vice versa, if I'm this way around and I push forward on the stick, it's going to do that. So that's called headless mode. I do not recommend flying headless mode, but the transmitter has it. Turn it off, put it into there. I recommend learning without headless mode on and use this in GPS mode, especially if you're new to it. Top of the drone, you've got take off and land. You've got your lock button, which unlocks your motors. You have a return to home button, and on the other side you've got your camera button. Short press camera, long press of video. Okay? And then on this side you have a wheel, which isn't used on this, it's on certain other drones, that would be the wheel to adjust the gimbal. The gimbal is a fixed gimbal, and when I say fixed, you can adjust it before you set off. So if you're flying at a height, I'd recommend pointing it down a little bit. If you're flying it quite low, maybe put it straight forward. You'll get the idea because you can see on the app what it's like anyway. So it might be better just to have a little tool around with it before you want to film. Get it to how you want it, land it, set your camera and off you go. So, that's the controller, that's the drone. So let's just turn it on. Turn the controller on. Okay, if you're wondering why everything's flashing, every time you fly this drone, it needs to have a GPS compass calibration, which I'm going to show you in part two of the video, but it's simply a matter of spinning the drone 
until the light, I don't know if it's going to work in here, we can try it, until the lights change colour. So I've got green there, face it downhill, do exactly the same again, until we get another flashing colour. Okay. And now you've got steady lights. That's telling me that it's ready to fly. Obviously do not say, do not do your covers calibration inside, do it in, in an open space away from anything, try not to have your mobile phone in your pocket. Make sure you've got no magnetic objects so you get a good compass calibration. But that's how you do it. You get the general idea. So now that's took it out of the calibration mode. So let's have a look at the app. So let's just go into my Wi-Fi settings. You need to find your Wi-Fi. And let's see what it is. I can't remember what it is on this one. I think it's, yeah, Holy Stone FPV. You can see that on my phone. Holy Stone FPV. Let's click that up. We're in. And then the app you want is the Ophelia GPS app. See that on my phone? Available from iOS and the Play Store. Just click on that. I've already got the app open. So, forget my screen flickering, that's because, of the, that's because of the refresh rate on my phone to the camera, to all the lights in here and whatever's going on. So, there you can see. So let's just get it a bit closer, zoomed up. So you can see the clarity. Yeah, a slight bit of lag you're always going to get an FPV drone. But I hope you can see on there how clear the screen looks, because it does look really, really clean. Got some lag there, you see what I mean? You're going to get that kind of lag, you're always going to get that with a drone that works this way. So, let's just have a look at the app. So, on the app, I'm going to do this quickly, not so much to show you really on one of these. On the left hand side, you've got your return to home button, the orbit mode, which I'll show you in the video. Follow me. On the other side, you have um, waypoints, you have change from camera to video, when it's a red circle it means it's on video, on the other side you've got your signal strength, your Wi-Fi signal strength, your strength coming from your transmitter at 2.4 gig, your battery life of this and your battery life of your drone, the other side is your GPS count, and then you've got your cameras, um, your video playback settings, and on here you can adjust your parameters for your flight altitude, your flight distance and your flight radius. Make sure you adhere to the laws in your country on them. It's a very hot topic at the minute so make sure you do adhere to them. They're not set to anything in a minute but I can put in 120. Oh, I think I should have deleted everything out of the box first. So if I press 120 in, turn that on, let's do it again. I've deleted the box on it. 120. I think if I come out of that now, submit save data. So now I have a maximum flight altitude of 120 meters. It won't go above 120 meters. Now it's supposedly got. I haven't tried it, so it's supposedly got a Wi-Fi uh, wi range of around 300 meters and a flight range of around 800. So we'll test the flight range. As I say in the video that's coming up, I probably won't be going 900 meters with it, but we'll get some kind of idea what it's like. So overall impressions, the drone's really nice. I like the fit and finish of it. It's fitted, but it's finished nice. It's got nice motors. They feel dead smooth. 1700 kV motors, so they should be decent. It should have a nice flight time. I love the little light at the front. It's just a really nice finished off drone. So this is available from Amazon I got this from, so I'm going to leave the link below for the drone itself. Obviously it comes from Amazon so you are going to pay more money for it than if you, if you were to get one from China, but what you're buying is the returns policy, the fact it's going to come next day. And I still buy a lot of, lot of drones from Amazon even just to review, I bought this for myself, but it, I buy a lot of drones to review because of that point. So, I'll have a video come in as soon as possible. Um, when the weather clears up, stops snowing or stops being really windy, it's a bit of both today. Oh, it's going to rain, so well, as soon as the weather gets a bit better and I can get out, I'll get a flight footage done of the drone. But I'd imagine it's going to fly really nicely. I'd be shocked if it didn't. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.